So here we are, episode number two. Yes, I'm actually back to do another episode. I actually didn't realize how difficult it would be to do a video podcast. So I have a lot of respect for anybody who does this on like a daily basis. Um, you know, you people are pretty awesome to be able to pull off the production. For me, it's, you know, this is a camera, a mic, a light, and that's pretty much it. And maybe some B-roll from episode to episode. And maybe a few, you know, typography pieces that'll be either here or here or here. Um, so anyway, yeah, let's start. Episode number two. Let's talk about working with millennials. Gen Xers, not Gen Xers, excuse me, millennials. Um, Gen Z, if you will. Um, the millennial slash Gen Z crowd. You know, I've had the opportunity to hire a lot of different people of a lot of different age groups um, in my work. And I've always noticed that like, we get a lot of talk and conversation about how millennials are different and how a lot of times we get this rap of millennials and how they're very hard to work with. And while I understand part of that, I think there's, um, that's not really quite true to be honest with you. Um, they're just require a different way of working with them. Um, and I'm lumping millennials all together. I fully am aware that I'm just lumping them together. In fact, I'm probably lumping all millennials who are creative together in one fell swoop. But any of us who are in a, any creative endeavor, working with a millennial is different than working with a boomer or a Gen Xer. Um, and so we're gonna talk a little bit about how it's different and then what you can do to kind of make that work for you, especially if you're not a, you know, if you're not a millennial or if you're not used to that working in that, working in that environment. I think millennials, to a certain degree, all have some sort of certain common traits. And one of them is, is that when you're working with a group of millennials, you need to understand that they're high collaborative people. They want collaboration on a consistent basis. The problem is if you are managing creatives, if you're a creative director, your project manager, and you're not used to that, it's a little bit um, jarring at first. Uh, for me, I always grew up kind of doing what I call the 10-80-10 rule, which is uh, basically I hand off the first 10% of the project. Um, I walk with that project with the person and then I give them the next 80%, they run with it. And then I kind of on the back 10% of the project to close it out. So first 10%, I walk with them, 80%, you've got it. And on the back 10%, I come back to kind of, hey, let's do the project handoff, send it off to the client, et cetera. And then when I went and started working with millennials, I realized that they want a lot of feedback throughout the process. So I had to change from a 10, 80, 10 to like a 10, 20, 10, 20, 10, 20, 10, 20, et cetera, et cetera. So basically I give a little bit, they do their thing, I come back, I give a little more input, and it was a constant iteration process throughout the entire project. Now, of course, that leads to another problem, and that is you constantly being interrupted throughout the day, which I don't mind if my team hits me up. They're either gonna hit me up via like text message, Slack, um, not a lot of them actually email. <laughs> Um, and occasionally I've got one or two that really like to make phone calls. But for the most part, we're mostly a text messaging slack, slack audience. And so when you have that constant pinging throughout the day, you know that it's really hard to do what we call, or what Cal Newport actually calls, author of Cal Newport calls, deep work. That is the idea of doing some deep thinking about the work that you gotta do, those inter interrupted like hour and a half of like, I'm just gonna dive into whatever project I'm on and really focus. And that can become really difficult. So how do you actually give your people who work for you, like that actual like attention that they want, but at the same time, allow yourself to do some deep work that you need to do. Well, one of the ways to combat that is what we call batch, batching, if you will. And what that simply means is, um, you're going to say, hey, look, here's the deal. You probably got a thousand questions for me on this project. What I want you to do is this, unless it's an urgent, you need this answer to move on to the next step, I want you to batch all those questions and hold them together and let you and I have a time, a point in time during the day or during the week that I sit down and I go through all those questions for you and we literally go through them all and we just knock them all out one right after the other. That way they know in their mind that they're gonna have you for a certain amount of time during the day or during the week and you know you're freed up to really dive into your projects and the only time you're gonna be interrupted is when it's really an emergency. If you do that, you're gonna hopefully restore some sort of harmony and balance to your workflow. Otherwise, you'll be pinged throughout the day if you're working with millennials and they'll want a high collaborative, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me throughout the day and you won't be able to dive into that deep work. Now, of course, one of the ways to uh, avoid the pinging in, in the, throughout the day 
is to make sure that when you're dealing with millennials, I find that often I have to lay out extremely clear parameters for what I'm looking for. Uh, this is exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for. This is not what I'm looking for. Really, at the end of the day, they're asking, what's the measuring stick? How am I going to be judged? So I have to give a clear indication of here's what the goal looks like, paint a very clear picture for them, and let them know where they have freedom and where they don't have freedom. A lot of times, if I just say, hey, do this, make it look like X, go, a lot of times I get just kind of this glass-eyed stare. In no way, shape, or form does it mean that they're they're not uh, intelligent enough to handle the project. That's not it at all. The problem is on me not clearly outlining what I'm actually really looking for and just expecting them just to be go with it. When the reality of it is they're looking for more of a collaborative takeoff to the project for the you know, a lift off to the project, if you will, for it to start. The other thing you've got to realize is that when you're dealing with millennials, there's not a hard cutoff line between work and life itself, personal life. They are kind of much more like this. So if you're a Gen Xer, Gen Xers are used are, are pretty much known for they go to work, they come home, they kind of flip the switch and then they're home, okay? Uh, and that's just kind of a, how they're raised, what they probably saw with their mom and dad. However, that's not the way millennials work. For them, it's a constant flow throughout the day. So I've come to realize that if a millennial is on their computer checking Facebook, it's not the end of the world. If they've got a doctor appointment in the middle of the day, not the end of the world. Because the reality of it is, is at 10 o'clock at night, they may be working on something for me. Because for them, their work and life just kind of ebbs and flows throughout the day. There's not a hard cutoff between work and personal. Now, of course, some of you might be saying, well, how do I know I'm getting my actual 40 hours of work out of that person? And I hear that. And in some ways, it's a valid, valid logic, valid reasoning. However, I would argue that if you're measuring somebody's contributions solely by the number of hours that they are contributing, then that's an issue. Uh, I challenge you that it's when you work with millennials to judge them not on the amount of hours they spend in the office, but what they, how many, what they actually contribute when they're there. Like, what are they actually putting into the system? In other words, focus on the results of their work and not the amount of time they put in their work, because they can spend forty hours in the office and it can be a horrible, horrible forty hours. Or, yeah, they're there for forty hours and are they there mentally all the time? Maybe not, but at the time they are there, they produce amazing results. It's just a little bit of the give and the go. That's the new nature of the workflow and how they work. Now, that doesn't mean they're not hustling. They're not working hard. Again, they might work on the weekends when you wouldn't want to work on the weekends. But for them, it's a constant work that work is happens throughout the day, happens throughout their life, just like personal life. Again, it's weaving in and out. It's not this static, hard cutoff line that a lot of us are used to when we're working with coworkers. Again, I want to reiterate, I'm not trying to cast all millennials in like this thing that this is what they are, but I'm letting you know that if you're managing, you're working with millennials, it's a really, they're an amazing, amazing group of people to work with. They are highly collaborative. They want to work together. They believe in a cause, a mission, their and, and, and something, a greater, higher purpose to their work. And that is fantastic. And that's something that you just can't, you know, you what you could bottle up and sell. But there is some give and take on that. They want to be collaborative. They want to work with you. They don't just want to be handed something and sent off to a dark corner. They want an environment by which their ideas are going to be valued. But at the same time, they're going to feel like they're being heard. And the fact that that the project that they're working on is not just a individual solo effort, but something team oriented that they're working towards together as a group, as a mission, whatever you want to call it. You do that, you establish that kind of environment, and you are going to win with millennials and you're going to get more out of them than you ever thought you possibly could. Cool? Fantastic. Well, this concludes episode number two. And we might make episode number three, depending on how long it takes me to edit this episode, uh, given the fact, again, this is my first shot at doing video content. So we'll see how it goes. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you to everyone who subscribed so far, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.